So Obamacare might have more trouble than a wonky website. Sticker shock for thousands of middle class Americans, those who have actually been able to log on, that is. Now finding out what it will cost them. Here's Tim Powers, columnist for the Daily Beast, Katie Pavlich, editor of townhall.com news. Both are Fox News contributors, and uh, both of you ladies have stories. I mean, I mean and it, even in your own lives, you have stories about how your insurance has changed or the cost has changed. And Kirsten, I know we heard a bit of yours last week, and, and Katie, mm-hmm. I think you'll tell us in a moment here. But this is the, the, the headline I want to give you from the LA Times today, okay? This is a story exclusive to California. Right. You know how many, many Americans live out there, right? Middle class Californians with individual health plans are surprised they need more policies that cover more and cost more. Katie, this is the sticker shock. This is after you get past the website. This is what truly endures for this law. How are we to understand this now? Well, the problem is that this is called the Affordable Care Act, right? And now we're seeing that it's anything but affordable. The poor are being subsidized by the middle class. The rich, they can don't like that they're paying more, but they can at least afford it. And the middle class is stuck with the bill when they are promised not only that they can keep their insurance, which they're not able to do, but now they're paying double, triple in premium prices. For one family of four, we're seeing a tripling in premiums going from $300 to $1,000 a month. And that means less food on the table and less money for things like college. All right, I'm reading from the article, Keir. Middle income consumers face an estimated 30% rate increase on average in California due to several factors tied to the health care law. Now, how's this going to go down? Well, I think for the people that it's happening to, it's not going to go down very well at all, especially because the president said clearly that if you like your plan, you can keep it. And I heard David, David Axelrod this morning um, uh, on MSNBC saying that the vast majority of people would not see their health care plans change, which is a new talking point. You know, it used to be that if you liked your plan, you could keep it. Now it's just the vast majority of people will keep their health plans. And that's, that's the main problem. If, if, if the president had said, if you like your plan, you can keep it for double the price, <laughs> I don't think that yeah. people probably would have been as supportive. So I, I think that's his primary problem, is that he made a promise that he's not following through the, on. The two things that will do, it help those with pre-existing conditions, and everybody can agree on that. I think that's part of the Republican plan, too, in the beginning. Uh, and it helps the poor, too, because apparently all those on Medicaid, they, they're the ones who are signing up in droves, Katie. Uh, mm-hmm. but, but you wonder if this system is now a clever way of redistribution, redistribution of wealth in a way that people did not see before, but now is becoming plainly obvious. Well, it's not that they didn't see it. They weren't told about it. I mean, conservatives have been warning for years that Obamacare would make you know everyone's premium skyrocket. But in the end, we're looking at the, the total cost here, and there's no such thing as free health care. When you have to pay for other people's health insurance, when you have to pay for things that you don't need on your health care plan, and when you limit choice for people's plans, you know, the administration and, and some talking points are saying now, well, we're eliminating bad plans that people were on before, and we're giving this gov- them this government plan in return. And that includes things, A, that they don't need, but B, also limits their choices in terms of who they can see, when they can see them, and how much they pay. They don't have a choice in how much they pay now. They have to pay one price for the same plan that is double or triple what they paid before. Yeah, uh, you know, there's a political equation in all this, as you well know. I mean, both of you live and work in Washington, D.C. I, I mean, Kirsten, what is the political price as you see it now? So I think it's hard to predict right now because we don't know uh, how, how much worse it could possibly get or it, I guess it could potentially get better. I don't know. It, it, they, they will argue that once you get enough people in the system, maybe it'll bring the prices down. Um, but the problem is that the promises, that the basic fundamental promise that the president made has not been borne out for, for people. Now, it's true there are a lot of people who aren't going to see their insurance change, I guess, if you work for a corporation or something. Um, but but for people, if you're in the individual market, I don't know a single person who hasn't seen their insurance go up you know, but what, by what's, double. What's the effect of that, though? I mean, you shared a story mm-hmm. in your own life last week. And yeah, you, well, you're, you're th- not alone. Yeah, I just well the thing is if it's if it depends because if it's if the majority of people are not seeing their prices go up then I think it has less of an impact. I think we have to wait and but see we're talking and about the we middle, have to also but, but, see But Kirsten, I'm sorry that this is the middle class. But it's not the majority in, in, in of people California. who are insurance. Well, it could right, be hundreds not, of thousands of people and certainly right. that must have an impact. I'm not yeah. I'm not saying that it doesn't matter substantively. I'm just saying as an as raw in terms of raw numbers they sound really big but as in terms of percentages of people who vote they're actually pretty small. Well, that, that, so that, the, that, the, that, the, that's the bigger an interesting problem, point. 
Yeah, the bigger problem is the, is the website not functioning. I mean, there's a lot of different pieces to this, and I yes. think we have to wait and see. Do they get it functioning? Um, and we'll know more, I think, more towards the end of the year. Katie, what, what is your but, view on that? I mean, how do you the, see that developing? Uh, it doesn't matter if the website functions or not if people are still paying triple what they were for their premiums. People are getting hit right in the pocketbook on this, and the fact is that they just can't afford a tripling in their premium. When it comes to voting, you know, we saw the 2010 elections, and that was before we saw the implications of Obamacare. I'm going to say that in 2014, we're going to see that people are angry, they're feeling it personally, and on the individual level, sure, maybe people working for corporations aren't losing their insurance, but the majority of small business owners, guess what? They're they're on an individual plan, they're losing their insurance and they're, they're paying triple. So they're right. not hiring more people you know, they're, and they're not growing the you, economy. You both have talked about the statements that are not true. You like your health care, you keep it. You like doctor, you can keep it. That's not true. And, and, and mm -hmm. Carl Rose's point a half hour ago is that all comes back to the credibility of the commander in chief on this. Katie, thanks. Kirsten, we'll talk again, okay? Thank, Thank you. you, ladies. Talk to you soon. Okay.